uh, one or two sentences from my message that is appearing in your handbook. So let me read out. First of all, let me congratulate you, new chartered engineers and the new engineers who have successfully completed IESL examinations. Today, you are officially entering into two tiers of a very noble fraternity. In whichever context one may take, engineers are supposed to be creators, innovators and maintainers of civilizations as we know today. But be forewarned, Greatness and fame comes in hand with responsibility and accountability. Your achievement today is inseparably interleaved with your responsibility as a professional to the public, to the flora and fauna in our environment, and even may extend beyond this world. As chartered engineers, you will, be, you will certainly feel the flavor of what I say when you take the oath today and by reciting the code of ethics. So that is my first message. And the secondly, I take it upon myself to tell you in no certain terms, no uncertain terms rather, your undeniable and inalienable responsibility to safeguard and uphold the quality and the standards of our profession of engineering. We must make sure that the practice of engineering always rests on the hands of individuals with intelligence and aptitude, very important point, aptitude, with unwavering passion for the profession, unperturbed by vistas of personal gain. So these are the two main points apart from what I mentioned about the environment that I would like to emphasize upon you today. And uh, again, I would like to congratulate all of you who are gaining your Chartered Engineer status, awards, and your uh, graduateships, and the, your well-wishers, parents, spouses, children who are here today to witness your greatness today. And uh, let me bid a very Nice evening to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Engineer Professor T.M. Palevata, for your sincere wishes and your valuable advice to the graduates present here today. Well, earlier on, the President-elect did speak about this dynamic individual. So did the President speak about this uh, personality par excellence. Well, I've been in this profession for 38 years and it's a challenge and I hope I'll do justice in introducing all of you to our chief guest this evening who has had an illustrious career. Ladies and gentlemen, he graduated with a MBBS with second class honors upper division and a distinction in pediatrics, winning the C.R. De Silva gold medal for pediatrics in 1985. He completed his MD in pediatrics in 1990 and joined the academic staff of the alma mater. Over the next few years, he underwent further training in his chosen field of pediatrics in Monash Medical Center, Melbourne, Victoria, Australia, and later in Royal Alexandra Hospital for Children at Camper Down, Sydney, New South Wales. He subspecialized in neonatology and returned to Sri Lanka with vast experience in neonatal intensive care, including newborn emergency transport at the time. Well, with his experience, he was able to pioneer the establishment of a neonatal intensive care unit at the teaching hospital Karapitya, which functions smoothly even today. Ladies and gentlemen, he was appointed as head of the Department of Pediatrics in 1999, which post he held until 2009 for a continuous period of 10 years, during which period he served as a member of the University Senate as well. He's a member of the University Senate for more than 20 years. Ladies and gentlemen, he had further training in medical education in the University of Dundee and also participated in many training programs 
for teacher training. He functioned as the founder dean of the Faculty of Medicine, General Sir John Kutalavala Defense University, established in 2009, and the entire development was overseen by him. He also functions as an advisory committee member of many technical committees of the Ministry of Health, such as Technical Committee on Newborn and Family Health, Technical Committee on Maternal and Child Health, Breast Milk Code Monitoring Committee. These committees contribute immensely to policy development of the Ministry of Health. He was the president of the Perinatal Society of Sri Lanka in 2007 and president of the Sri Lanka College of Pediatricians in 2014-2015. Ladies and gentlemen, he was the founder dean of the Faculty of Allied Health Sciences of the University of Ruhuna from 2017 to 2019. In March 2019, he was appointed as the vice chancellor of the University of Ruhuna. Despite his busy schedule, he continues to teach and he's loved as a lecturer for his excellent presentation skills and clinical teaching skills. He is also highly reputed as a pediatrician in this country. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure in inviting our chief guest to address you all, Professor Sujiva Amrasena, Vice Chancellor of the University of Runa. Everybody, a round of applause. Good evening to all of you. Let me thank uh, for that very kind and maybe a little too extravagant introduction. Uh, let me first thank the president of the um, engineering uh, IESL Institute of Engineers of Sri Lanka, Professor Palayat, and uh, the president-elect, Professor Sarata Bekon, uh, and the council, members of the Council of Institute of Engineers of Sri Lanka for inviting me to be the chief guest on this evening. Um, uh, I was a bit surprised bit uh, nervous when I, uh, when I accepted that invitation because I thought, well, what do I know about in engineering? And my only connection, I was just telling you, President-elect, said, my son is a mechanical engineer qualified from University of Ruhuna, and that's it. And I think he's an associate member, but I don't think he's, <laughs> uh, he's attending today's ceremony or whether he's working towards getting a chartered qualification. They, he's on his own, he's independent, and he's very much probably like me, the way he thinks so. I probably knew nothing about engineering, but I, I thought I will speak to you today about uh, education with special relevance to some engineering aspects and social responsibility. Um, I was... Uh, uh, well, this, I think in this country, oh, and I think all countries in the world, in that sense, have two disparities. One is an educational disparity, and other one is economic disparity. Uh, I think educational disparity is connected to, or is leading to economic disparities. If you can, as engineers, and if we can, as doctors and professionals in this country, address those two problems, we will probably solve all the problems in the country and perhaps in the world. So just learn a little bit about data, because lots of you who are graduates of state university system do not learn actually about uh, educational issues and problems in the education system of Sri Lanka, although most of us, I including my, I myself, have been a vociferous critique of the government, of then governments of Sri Lanka uh, for edu problems of education system without knowing or studying those issues in depth. The, the biggest or the most effective and most uh, successful long-term intervention introduced by any government of Sri Lanka to eliminate poverty is free education. 
have no doubt about that because just look back in you your career in another 20 or 30 years most of you you may have come from very middle class background so maybe lower middle class background so even poorer social classes but you will be going up the ladder and becoming uh, a member of the affluent class social class one day and that would be due to your ed the education or education qualifications you received mostly through education free education and that's exactly the story of, about me i was a poor kid as a child but i am rich today i must say i am rich today as a professor and an academic as a doctor and that's all due to free education so don't ever believe that any academic in the entire university system will ever contribute to privatized free education in this country no one will I have no doubt about it no one will have no doubt about it however we have disparities in education i can give you just data very quickly roughly about 350000 children are born in this country it can vary but that's the rough figure 98% of them enter the primary education at year, at age 5 years and for year 1 2% don't and that 2% belong to special groups of children with special needs and we our education system doesn't address them so we have a disparity there by numbers that's about 7000 2% is small 7000 is big almost 97% of that 98% which enter grade 1 complete up to grade 5 and after that numbers go down by the time year 11 uh, about 10% stop their education now it used to be about 30% long time back now it's about 10 but that is 35000 10% is small 35000 is big that's because of socio economic problems economic disparities lead them to stop education and enter employment market to save families look after hunger and poverty in the family think of them where do they come from they come from estate populations they come from urban slums they come from rural poor village youth that's it and they are the people who contribute to fill our prisons so there is a disparity in education you need to understand that now how do we address this there are means to address this by equity caps my question when my son entered my eldest son entered year 1 in the school richmond college goal I was said why should my son get free uniforms i am a doctor i can pay for it but i can't give my child son's free uniforms to somebody else actually my eldest son who became a mechanical engineer subsequently on the first day after school when i so him with these free uniforms ask him look my son can we give these uniforms to a friend of yours in the class who is not very rich he said no these are mine so that's the attitude that we inculcate by doing that i never taught that to my son the very same son after 13 years when he entered the state university system asked me tate i am not going to fill this form for your mahapola anniversary you are going to fund my education aren't you Yes, I said yes. I am, and all the fathers are proud to fund their children's education. All the parents are, and that's why they are here today to see you getting this chartered engineer post. So we can change our children. They are thinking with time. That's the first message. You, you can change the world. You can change your children, and you can change on your own, on your thinking. Equity is the issue. if my son didn't get uniforms and some other poor kid could have got four uniforms for the year that's it that's equity don't give it to the rich person give it to the poor person and make sure that person is able to sustain the education for 13 years with that support extra support for poor people no support for rich people the education model that we are providing today must change if you want to address those disparities that's one then 
ಡ್ಯೂರಿಂಗ್ ಯುವರ್ ಟ್ರೈನಿಂಗ್ ವಿ ನೀಡ್ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಅಬ್ಬೆ ಕೋನ್ ವಾಸ್ ಮೆನ್ಷನಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಮೈ ಅಂಡರ್ ಗ್ರ್ಯಾಜುಯೇಟ್ ಡೇಸ್ ಎಸ್ ಇ ಲಾಂಗ್ ಸ್ಟೋರಿ ಐ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಫಗೆಟ್ ಬಟ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಕೀಪ್ ರಿಮೈಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಮಿ ಆಫ್ ಇಟ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಟು ಗೋ ಥ್ರೂ ಹಾರ್ಡ್ ಟ್ರೈನಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಏಮ್ ಟಿಲ್ ಮಿಡ್ ನೈಟ್ ಓ ಮೇ ಬಿ ಓವರ್ ನೈಟ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಅದರ್ ನೈಟ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಅದರ್ ನೈಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ತ್ರೀ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಥ್ರೂ ಹಾರ್ಡ್ ಶಿಫ್ಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಟ್ರೈನಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಐ ರಿಸೀವ್ಡ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ಎನ್ ಅಂಡರ್ ಅಂಡರ್ ಗ್ರ್ಯಾಜುಯೇಟ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಪ್ರಿಟಿ ಹಾರ್ಡ್ ಐ ವುಡ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಲವ್ಡ್ ಇಫ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಟ್ರೈನಿಂಗ್ ವಾಸ್ ಲೆಸ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರೆಸ್ಫುಲ್ ಬಟ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ವಿ ನೀಡ್ ಟು ಗೋ ಥ್ರೂ ಇಫ್ ಐ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಅ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಐ ವಾಂಟ್ ಯು ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಟು ಬಿ ಡೂಯಿಂಗ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ because i want all of you to be good very well trained engineers more practically oriented be pragmatic engineers who can work not like the way uh, the president was selling telling about you know i built it according to the needs of the mp now you are going to do it professionally because you are a professional and stand up to him and say no sir this is the way i'm going to build it because that's my standard if you're not going to say that you're going to ruin this country please remember there are three e's i'm going to connect you to our other other sides of life in health we we have a huge problem about road accidents and accidents in general we have we are losing almost 2 3000 people a year due to accidents on average from 1982 where we have data we have lost more than 2700 lives every year due to accidents there has not been any reduction of that number to date to date no reduction we have reduced polio we have eliminated polio we have eliminated measles we have eliminated malaria from this country but we have not reduced road accidents if you want to prevent road accidents and deaths we are being taught to follow three e's what are these three e's one is engineering two is education three is enforcement engineering education and enforcement so enforcement pretty easy road rules uh, speed limits uh, various other uh, 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 governing uh, rules and regulations can be imposed for safety of people and including uh, seat belts yes you can educate people to not drive fast don't drive don't drink and drive and so on and so forth that's education engineering is about design is about design i f- really feel very bad when i see a big hole in the middle of the road kanda in the area of kalambo municipality in a dark spot in the night not visible and somebody Uh, meets with an accident in that home and and dies and you probably remember if i don't know whether you can remember there was a le- young lady during a very heavy season very heavy rain uh, stepped into a drain without realizing that there was a drain on the passage where they have removed a, a, a concrete block and she just underwent the drain and her body was found almost a kilometer away so that's engineering please be careful engineers save lives and engineering can save lives it's pretty easy for you to say okay doctors destroy lives and doctors destroy health yes they do they destroy health and they can kill but you also can right. where are other examples for those i had a serious problem this morning in my own university we have given a contract to build a 12 story complex for the medical school for the last two years in fact they're supposed to hand over the building by the end of uh, november this year but we haven't come up from the foundation over the weekend the earth was slipping from the construction site and was threatening a building ne- next to it and this morning the engineering team from the company has abandoned the site and left has abandoned the site and left and i was lost and i didn't know what to do that's a responsibility please eh, don't ever lose moral and ethical standards because i'm i'm sure that particular incident might lead to deaths of young graduates 
Now they look at the other side. We're actually putting up that building with a clear plan of increasing intake to medical school. We are planning to in increase our intake from 200 to 300 slowly with those buildings. And we have two lecture theatres in that building with 300 seat capacity. I will not be able to admit 300 students to the faculty as planned in 2021. And look at the colossal waste of money and the social cost of that. 100 additional students cannot have opportunities in the medical school. And what is the cost of that? So please, please abide by your moral and ethical standards and professional standards set by this institution of engineers Sri Lanka and in future the Engineering Council of Sri Lanka. You also can contribute in many other ways. Do you know?